So hello and welcome to Byte 10 already of our Python crime game. If you are a member of the YouTube um, channel, so you have this uh, notebook already available on Google Drive, go and pick it up from there. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to solve for, for um, Byte 9 and then do Byte 10. So for byte 9, you had a, a few things that you needed to crack in order to be able to do it. Let me show you. So to do byte 9, you copy everything from byte 8. And then what I did is I created a function for... Um, I think I have it up here. I created a function for the line chart. You can see here, this is how to transform the data. And this is the actual creation of the... Um, line chart and it happened to me i'm sure it happened to you that when you executed the text even though if you had you know put the crimes and then print and then put the line they printed at the same time so what you need to do is to add these two things every time you create a matplotlib the first one is to show the map, and the other one is to close a matplotlib action so it doesn't execute everything that is available on the code for it to execute. So I have that on the map, crimes map, and on the line chart, and that's what it makes it execute in order. I also created a function for the help function that we're going to use later on in the game, even though we've already created it. Okay? Okay, so let's start with byte. So by them, ladies and gentlemen, what are we going to do? We're going to, again, continue reading, obviously, the tables from the database. We're going to continue aggregating to be able to do our maps, our plot. And then we're going to now learn how to do a bar chart in Markplotlib. So this is how it looks, the game so far. So you say, do you accept the challenge? Yes. What is your name? Ruth. And then, hello, welcome. And then here it comes the uh, map. There you go. And then it says the number of crimes have been stable for the past two years, the line chart, and this is what we're going to create today, this bar chart here. So these are the crimes by type in a bar chart. Okay? It's actually going to be very easy. You know, the videos have been long, but it's because everything is new. But now that we know Matplotlib, we know a ton of pandas, things are getting easier. So today's video is going to be an easy one. So let's go back to byte 10 and do it, do the bar chart. So the first thing that we need to do is what we always do, which is connect to the database. So you import the skewed little, pandas, numpy, monthly. We're going to need all of them. So shift enter, and then it gives us the table names. I think that is quite neat. So I remember how the table names are called. That's why I executed it always with that. Now we're going to get data from the crime scene report. We've done this a ton of times, so continue doing it. DF. And this gives us the crime scene report. And what we want to do now is, regardless of the date, count the number of crimes by type. So we need to aggregate this table where we have the type and then times a specific type occur in the table, okay? So we're going to group by the thing that we've been doing for a while. Probably you're a master of group by. It's very useful, actually. So we're going to do df3. I'm going to call it three because I already have two back at the code. Um, it might get messy otherwise. <laughs> so probably I, don't even, I wouldn't even have to do three. I probably should call it like df bar chart just to be super specific. Maybe I will do it later. So DF group by, that's what we're going to do. We're going to group by the column type. And then we're going to do a count on type two, because we want to know how many times a, a type occurred. Count. Right, and then DF3, uh, sorry, three. And as you remember, this is giving me the series. I don't want that. I want to have reset index. We've done this on byte, all the bytes. Now, 
this will convert it into a data frame. And it says cannot insert type already exists, obviously. So if you remember when we've done group by before, what it does is the group by gives the name of the column that is grouping by, but we already have it, which is type. So it won't work. We have to give it a name, a new name. So the name is going to be crimes as the same as before. And now it works perfectly. So now we have, there are 148 arsons, 145 assaults, blackmails, blah, blah, blah. You can sort it if you want to, but I don't think we need to sort it. Well, yeah, probably we need to sort it. So we get it into, yeah, we're gonna sort it. Sort values. And then we're gonna sort it by crimes. And I never remember ascending, descending, but yeah, we want it the other way around. So as sending equal true false, I mean. <laughs> so there you have it. So now we have our chart, no, our table. So now we're going to plot it with matplotlib. So we first if you remember, we create the figure and we create the axis where, you know, you put the X and Y. We haven't specified anything, so it goes from zero to one. Now we're going to define the X and Y axis. So the X axis here, we're going to put category, category names is a bad name, but so this is the EF3 dot type. Right? And we are going to put as the y axis the totals. Total or totals? Totals. So that is going to be the F3 dot crimes. Um, so now we have defined the x and y axis. What we're going to do now is to plot them in a bar chart. So the bar chart in Markplotlib is called ex bar, x axis. Category names, y axis, totals, and then you can start like that so you can see what you're doing. So, easy, right? Um, right, so you can see I don't like that everything is lowercase. I think it looks pretty ugly. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to change it to title, like proper casing. Looks a lot better, right? So this is proper casing for x-axis. It's good to document your code because you never know <laughs> later on in your life what you need. Um, now, we want to have the totals in here and get rid of the frame and all that stuff. So to get rid of the frame, let's start there, you do like that. So it's set frame on false. And then it gets rid of these spines, all of the spines at one go. We want to remove the white ticks and the labels. So we're going to do like that. You see, it got rid of all of these white ticks and then an empty list. And then we're going to remove the X ticks, but keep the label, so the ticks are the, the small bars in there. We got want to get rid of those, but keep the labels. And to do that, this is how you do it, okay? So tick parameters, this is just for the y, x axis, but if you want, you can put both and it will do the same for x and y. And then the tick, you set the length to zero. So it will just go away. We're going to add a uh, title. And the title, the same as we did on byte 9, so I'm not going to go around the bushes with this, is just set title, you put the title and then you put where in the y-axis you want it, and then add some padding if you want. You, I don't think we need to have padding. That looks good anyway. Right, so now, if you remember our chart, it is red. So we're going to change it to red. And you do that on the bar chart. So color is red. 
And I have changed the transparency a little bit. If you remember, alpha sets the transparency. So 0 0.7, I think I have, on all the charts. They're looking quite pretty, isn't it? I have a net color also. And here you just go to the documentation, look what you can change and go wild. There's no edge color, I have it black. Right, cool. Okay, so what do we need to do more? I want to do these, the annotations, and then the circle on the annotations. You know how to make annotations now, right? We loop them x and y coordinate and we put each value in there. So for x and y in zip, remember it takes two lists and I trace them one by one in the order that the lists appear. So here we're going to put the x-axis, we have the category names. Category names. For the y-axis we have the totals. And I want you to see it, so we're going to print it. And you see that it's iterating for every single value. And then if you remember how we annotated on byte 9, it is AX, AX annotate. What do you want to annotate? We want to have the totals in here. So the totals is the Y. And then we want to have X, comma Y, right? No, X, no, it's X, Y equal to X and Y. And that X and Y is this X and Y. Don't get confused. X, Y text equal to X and Y. <laughs> And then here, we're going to say horizontal alignment in the center, because if you don't put that, I'll show you what it does later. And size 12, I have set, and then I have, I think that's enough for now. Let's run this so you can see. So do you see what it does? It just places the values in each place. If I get rid of this center that we didn't have on byte 9, it goes to the... Right? We don't want that. We want it in the center. So let's go back and run it. Okay, cool. Do you remember that how we did the boxes for the annotations on byte 9? Same here. Exactly the same. So we're going to do our BB boxes. <laughs> you remember. So you go in there. BB box is going to be the face color white, the edge color black, and the white, the box style in this case is going to be a circle. And um, I'm missing a parenthesis. So you see the circle? This is a circle, the white face color, and the black thing around it. And uh, we get rid of this print, we don't need it anymore. And then we have our chart, like how easy was it to do? And you can change everything, like <laughs> absolutely everything. It's so cool. So your job, okay, this is not there, this is, should be up here. Your job is going to be to put the game together the way that we show here. So super easy, you just create another function for this type of chart and then you execute it. So the tricky part, it was on byte 9. Now you just have to repeat what you did on byte 9 with the bar chart, okay? Good, so for the next byte, which is probably going to come after the holidays, here's the thing, our code is getting a little bit too long. So if we go to byte 9, look, you see lines and lines and lines of code. This is still small, but it's getting bigger. So what we're going to do is we're going to clean the house a little bit after the holidays because there are ways in Python to create modules. And then, you know, when we do this import here, and this is going to be for byte 10, I don't know why I'm explaining it here, but when you are importing this stuff, we are going to create one of these for charts and another one for the database stuff. And then we're going to import it. So we don't have that code in here. That's what we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to create modules and execute it, but that will be byte 9.
after the holidays. So until then, Merry Christmas. Um, for you <laughs> members that are watching this early, probably when you see this, if you're not a member, it's not Christmas anymore. But either way, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I'll see you again very, very soon.